You already have feet on the ground there in India. What makes it attractive for you as a U.S. company to do business and have operations there? Look, India is incredibly important to us. We've got 1,200 employees out of you know, over 6,000 globally, over 1,200 are in India. <clears throat> it's a, a center you know, of excellence in multiple areas for us around R&D, um, you know, customer support, professional services, and the like. Um, you know, we're big fans of India. So as you know, Prime Minister Modi is pushing for a digital transformation of the company completely consistent with what Avaya is doing, you know, sort of, you know, we, we ourselves are a bit of a, you know, a successful transformation story. Um, so we are, you know, we fully support all the digital transformation initiatives that are going on in India. Yeah, I do want to bounce one thing off you. CNBC hearing from some corporate leaders that there's uh, some difficulties doing business in India, despite Modi's push, um, issues with regulation and also dealing with the governments there. You got to be clear, it's not just the federal government. There's different, you know, basically state level governments there. What's been your experience so far? What's the biggest challenge? Well, I think there is, in any developing market, there's always challenges. But, you know, we've got centers of excellence throughout the country. I mean, in particular in Pune, in Hyderabad, um, in Bangalore and Gurgaon. Uh, again, I said over 1,200 employees. As the government is pushing the digital transformation, <clears throat> it really is sort of, you know, Prime Minister Modi's initiative around, around creating self-reliance in the country. So there are projects throughout that are, um, in effect, a government-supported effort to deal with structural challenges of a developing country. So, for instance, there are smart city initiatives in 100 different cities uh, throughout uh, the country. We're actually driving, Avaya is driving 20 of them. So, for instance, uh, the Bangalore Safe City Project or something similar in okay. Farid uh, Faridabad. Well, can um, I, can I interrupt you for one second, Alan? When you, when you say yeah. Avaya is driving it, how does that work for your business? I know you're a tech-focused business. You're in cloud computing and some other things. But how does that work on a practical level? Not the tech, but actually working with the government. Well, so the government has an... So what we provide is enterprise communications that drive, you know, business customers' ability to uh, drive customer experience. So we're the underlying technology for companies driving customer experience. Within that, think about uh, 911 services... Um, think about support, which we do and provide. Um, think about the social security system, the Aadhaar social security system. The underlying technology, as Indian citizens are calling in or, you know, digitally or by voice into their equivalent to the social security system, we drive. Um, we drive the um, underlying enterprise communications for the largest uh, public health care agencies. So, you, you know, in order for... India, I mean, India, if, as we're a very, very global company. In order to be a successful global company, you have to play in a place like India, which is the world's largest population, has, from a talent perspective, the youngest population in terms of access to talent. If you want to be a, global, a successful global company, and, you know, we are that, uh, you have to play. Otherwise, you're right. going to be left behind. And so... So speaking of playing... And quite, you, quite frankly, you do this by desire. It's an enormous market. Okay, speaking of playing, do you bring your U.S. executives over or do you find executives there in India? How do you bridge the gap? Because it is a different culture and it's simply just a different country. So we're developing local leadership there. There's, um, we've not done any sort of expat-related uh, management structure. <laughs> so, you know, this is a genuine investment in the country that extends beyond just developing local leadership, creating centers of excellence in multiple cities, but it's also, for instance, investing in the community. So, for instance, we've invested with disadvantaged okay. youth and training them. So we've actually trained 700 of them, 400 of which now have successfully gotten corporate jobs. So the whole thing is you're building, you're taking this raw talent, biggest population in the world, great technical skills, a young population, it's, it's already a top 10 market for Avaya globally. Okay. So last so question, it's an, you're talking about talent? self-interest to support Prime Minister Modi's initiatives right. about 
You're, you're talking about talent and how young the workforce are, there is. So let's go bottom line. You're also in China. How does the workforce in India compare to China um, when it comes to a skill level? The skill levels in, in both are very good, and they're both developing, obviously, huge middle classes. You know, you have politically the environment, obviously, is more favorable um, in India, and it's easier to do business there. Uh, but clearly, we invest in both areas extensively. You know, I was just at, at our global conference this week in Orlando, and we have, um, you know, we're in multiple cities in China. My, uh, my whole APJ region uh, leadership was here. A variety of companies that are super important to us that we serve in China are there as well. I mean, we have 90,000 customers right. across 172 countries. Uh, both China and India are exceptionally important to us.